Hey, what's up YouTube? Alex here, and in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down, I know it sounds a little too good to be true, but low risk sports betting strategies to make money betting on football. So football is a sport I love. It's my favorite sport to watch. And last year, betting on football, which means college plus the NFL, I made over $55,000. And there's three strategies that I think are great for beginners, beginning sports bettors, those looking to grow their bankroll in a low risk way, as well as people who aren't really open to you know, having a bunch of variants and you more want slow and steady wins, you're making money week after week. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through three strategies, so we might as well get into it. So a few things before we dive into the three specific strategies. Number one, I love sports betting, I love talking about data-driven, sharp, profitable strategies. So if you enjoy this type of content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and also comment any questions you have. And then my second thing is, is I don't bet with emotions. So many people, it's like, oh, well, do you watch the game? It's like, I mean, I love watching sports. Don't get me wrong. I love sports, but I don't bet with my gut. 99% of sports bettors use their gut, their intuition, their emotions to make their bets and the sports books are in business. So obviously that doesn't work long-term. If you're betting with your gut, you're gonna get killed. All of my strategies are sharp data-driven strategies. Anyways, the first strategy that I love to use is called middle betting. I also call middles or middle bets or middling, there's different words for it, low risk lottery tickets of sports betting. And essentially what a middle is, is you're placing two bets. So all sports books, they all set their own lines. Every book wants to be unique. There's hundreds of sports books, and if every book set the line at the exact same level, we wouldn't need hundreds of books. So all these books set their own lines. And out of the millions of odds across sports books, sometimes two books get super out of sync. And when that happens, you can place what's called a middle. You can bet the over on one book, the under on another book, and essentially have this window of opportunity where you can win both bets. So I feel like the easiest way to explain this is honestly just with an example. So in the Florida State game, their quarterback DJ, sportsbooks, they started to post odds for college football player prop lines. FanDuel opened him up at 192 and a half. Fliff opened him up at 209 half. So many sports bettors, they like to think in terms of, oh, did you bet the over or the under? But it really depends like where is the line set? So in this specific instance, you have a massive discrepancy between Fliff and also, you know, a few other sports books like FanDuel, Parlay Play. So you have a 17 yard gap where if you bet the over on FanDuel, over 192 half, the under on Fliff, under 209 half, you're always gonna win at least one of those bets. But if DJ throws for 193 to 209 passing yards, then you're gonna win both bets. And guess what? This hit literally the first game of the season, he had 193 passing yards, so the over would have cashed on FanDuel, and the under also would have cashed on Fliff. So the key to middle betting is number one, you need to you know find these plays. Most bets are not gonna be middles, the sports books are gonna have their line set at the exact same level, or really, really close. So you're scanning through the market, millions of odds, trying to zone in on these discrepancies, Odds Jam has a betting tool for pointing out middles. That's really useful. And the second thing is you need to use multiple sports books. If you only use one sports book, you're not going to be able to middle bet. So ideally, the more books you use, the more middles you'll find, right? And obviously, depending on what state you're located in, you may have different books available to you. But as a sports better, since all books set their own lines, having more books means more profitable betting opportunities like middles. So the next question you may be wondering is, okay, great, you found one middle bet, but you probably can't find a lot of these, and that's actually completely false. Again, having more sports books means you're gonna have more middle betting opportunities available because all these books set their own lines, but literally in the same exact game, there was another middle play that was insanely profitable. Williams rushing yards. FanDuel had his line at 48 and a half, Fliff had his line at 58 and a half. So that's a pretty big difference. You know, middle betting, it's kind of like 
if stock prices were different on Fidelity and E-Trade, you can buy a stock at 48.50 on Fidelity, then go sell it on E-Trade at 58.50, right? You're essentially day trading the sports books. You're thinking like an investor, a data-driven investor. So again, you have a 10 yard gap. If Williams has 49 to 58 rushing yards, you're gonna win both bets. Obviously, you gotta put in the work, right? Nothing I say in this video, I love sports betting. I spend time doing it. I'm not able to get the results by just betting five minutes before kickoff. I'm constantly looking for good bets, spending a few hours a day. And these opportunities present themselves all the time, especially if you're using a software like Odds Jam to point out middle bets, you will see opportunities all the time. You really just have to put in the work to actually take advantage of them. But anyways, what I wanted to move on to next, which is another low risk betting strategy. It's very low hanging fruit. It's almost free money. I know that sounds crazy, but it's taking advantage of sports book promos. Okay, so a lot of people ask, no way, sports books wouldn't give out free money. It's probably a trap. And that's not the case. Sports books in some ways are like restaurants. There's hundreds of restaurants, there's hundreds of sports books. So just like a restaurant may offer free drink tickets if they just launch to try to get people in the door, sports books run promos to try to keep betters coming back to their platform. FanDuel, DraftKings, BetMGM, Fliff. There's so many books, these books have to compete for customers and their interests. These sports books know most people, unfortunately, are degenerates who bet with their gut and they're gonna make thousands of dollars off that customer every single year if that customer is using the sports book. So sometimes they'll run really good promos. So for example, prize picks, this isn't a trap, it's not a joke. They have Caleb Williams discounted to half of a passing yard. For all intents and purposes, that's free money. It's a free win. On Fliff, it's not an NFL play, but this is the play that I saw available for this weekend. They have Sean O'Malley to have any significant strike at plus 100. That is literally a free win. You can only bet a max of $10 on this promo. It's not like you can bet $1,000, but it's literally free money. And I just explained two books, two of the most popular books I just scanned through quickly and checked out their promos tab, but there are hundreds of sports books. I'm sure there's dozens of other books that are legal in your state, and all these books are running profitable promos. So the next data-driven strategy we can discuss, I love this strategy, it's how I actually started sports betting, got my feet wet and made my first $40,000. I think it's a great betting strategy to start with is arbitrage betting. And I know I've talked about arbitrage in other videos, but the truth about sports betting is complex doesn't necessarily mean better. People are always asking me things like, yo, can you build some crazy model for Korean baseball? And my answer is always no. If you wanna make money sports betting, it's about understanding sharp, proven strategies, understanding how markets work, and then just implementing them. For the most part, sports betting, it doesn't even matter what sport you're betting on. The same concepts that apply to betting on the NFL, the same strategies also work for the NBA, like middle betting. We went through some examples earlier in um, college football, some really profitable middle bets. You can do that in the NBA as well. So what's really important is understanding middle betting, why it's so profitable. It's not necessarily the specific sport. You know, I kind of think about it like, you know, if you want to be happy in life, you just want to be happy, right? Like if you have a goal in life, maybe it's to be happy. It's pretty simple. You're happy or you're not happy. It's the same thing with sports betting. You want to make money. If you're making money, don't always try to switch things up. Use the strategies that are working. There's no glamorous, you know, strategy that's going to help you cash $1 to a million parlays. That's all BS, right? There's no lottery tickets. There's no one who can predict the future and has a crystal ball. Not at all. Sports betting is about grinding, putting in the work to find bets with an edge, whether it's middle bets, promos, arbitrage. You have to put in the work and you'll get the results. But anyways, what is arbitrage betting? So earlier we explained middle betting, which is when books have their line set at different levels. 
Arbitrage betting is when books have their line set at the same level, but their odds are so different because all these books set their own odds that you can bet the over on one book, the under on another book, and guarantee a profit. So once again, having multiple sports books is critical. All these books set their own odds. So the more sports books that you use, as degenerate as it says, people are always like, you've used dozens of sports books, you're crazy. It's like, no, that's actually the key to profitable sports betting is you wanna have as many outs as possible. But in this specific example, from um, a really big arbitrage better, he's big on Twitter, he made a risk-free like $40, something like that, in this random college football game, right? These arbitrage plays, these profitable betting opportunities, they're not always on the most popular game of the day. Sometimes they are, but sometimes the really lucrative opportunities are in, you know, kind of niche college football games, like this specific one. So you can see Fliff and Caesars had super different odds, as you can see kind of in the screenshot. So what this guy did is following an arbitrage calculator, you put in your stake on one book, it tells you how much to bet on the other book. I always recommend hedging, or not hedging, but rounding your bet size so you don't sketch out the sports books. He bet 370 on the over, on Caesars, he bet 500 on the under on Fliff. So let's go through the math quickly. There's this huge discrepancy in odds, so you're probably wondering, how's he making a risk-free profit? Well, the game's either going over or under, I believe the line is 31 and a half, yeah it is. So the game's either gonna go over or it's gonna go under. One of these bets will always win, one will always lose. So if the game goes over, he loses his bet on the under, his $500 bet on Fliff, but on Caesars, he wins 370 times 1.45, 536.50 in profit. He bet 370 at plus 145 odds. So his net profit would be 36 bucks and 50 cents. He lost 500 on Fliff, he profited 53650 on Caesars. So he's up money. That's what matters, he's up money. But what if the game goes under? Well, if the game goes under, he loses 370 on Caesars, where he bet on the over, and on Fliff, he wins $500 bet at minus 125 odds, is $400 profit. So he's up 400 on Fliff, he's down 370 on Caesars. Once again, he's up money. In this case, he's up $30. So it doesn't even matter what happens, game could go over, game could go under, you don't care at all, you're day trading the sports books, taking advantage of these inefficiencies, and he makes a risk-free $30. Again, most lines are not arbitrage bets. Odds Jam has a betting tool for arbitrage, scans the millions of odds across sports books to point out these rare few plays for the sports books you use where you can guarantee a risk-free profit. You just have to use the software, put in the time. You can also find arbitrage bets manually, but obviously software makes it easier. You just have to put in the work to place these bets. And you may be like, eh, $30, eh, that doesn't seem that great. How long does it take to place two bets? This guy bet this arbitrage bet while the game was going on. So at the end of the game, maybe an hour, two hours later, whatever, he's $30 richer, right? So your return on capital, he made $30, he's 30, 40, whatever it is, he's $30 richer right after the game ends in just a few hours, and these bets only take a few minutes to lock in, right? Where else can you make a risk-free 30 or $40 sitting at home in your boxers on the couch, right? Like this is crazy, you're day trading the books. Now again, you wanna use as many books as possible, I also recommend, because sometimes these really good arbitrage bets, these big discrepancies, they move fast, right? You're taking advantage of discrepancies on sports books, you're day trading the books. And at the end of the day, every profitable bet is a discrepancy. If you're actually profitable long-term, you're betting on profitable bets. Sports books, they don't want you to bet on profitable bets. So long story short, with arbitrage, sometimes these odds change. It's crazy, but you gotta be fast. Learn how to navigate these sports books. I also recommend when I started arbitrage betting, I only put down five or $10 per play, 
right? I wanted to get the hang of it. How fast do I have to move? So there's a bit of a learning curve. You definitely want to put in some time to practice, play some smaller bets, but pretty soon, like a bunch of these people you can see on Twitter, you can be making 40, 50, you know, risk-free dollars in just 30 seconds by locking in an arbitrage play. Now, one thing that annoys me, but people always say is like, oh, arbitrage betting, sports books hate it. It may get you limited. No, sports books hate winning. Arbitrage betting, these sports books, you know, don't have meetings where they communicate, right? Like there's definitely things you want to do to prevent your account ideally from getting limited such as round your bet sizes. Don't bet $389.33, bet $390. There's things like that, rounding the arbitrage calculator a bit, but in general, sports books hate winners. When I started arbitrage betting, there were some books that cut down my bet size. When I started middle betting, when I started EV betting, when I started using correlation on fantasy sites, if you are making money long-term, sports books, they do not like winners. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. At the end of the day, if you make $100,000 on DraftKings, it doesn't matter if you're using your own model, if you're using arbitrage, middle betting, whatever, whatever strategy you're using to actually get consistent results and make money, there's a chance they cut down your bet size a bit, which again is why you wanna use as many bucks as possible. Granted, limits aren't a horrible thing, but there's some books that are known for being pretty aggressive for customers who are making money about lowering their bet size. But what's the alternative? Would you prefer to just not make money? Because if you just wanna lose all your money and be a degenerate gambler, sure, you won't get limited on BetMGM. There's definitely tips like rounding your bet size that can help out a bit, but long story short, you gotta make the decision for yourself. Do you wanna make money or do you not wanna make money? Do you wanna be a degenerate and have unlimited betting sizes but you're losing money? Or do you wanna use sharp data-driven proven strategies, make tens of thousands of dollars per account, and then, okay, whatever, maybe some accounts, instead of betting $1,000 max, they only give you $100 or 50, and that cuts into your profit margin, which is annoying, but that's just kinda of how it is. So, long story short, three low-risk strategies, middles, promos, and arbitrage, Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please feel free you know, to reach out, comment, subscribe to the channel. I love this stuff and thank you so much for your time.